What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be doing a complete overview, a complete review of M1 Finance, a complete unbiased review of M1 Finance, taking a look at pros of the platform, cons of the platform, why I personally like it, and we're also going to be taking a look at the mobile app as well as the desktop app, so you can see how the platform looks on a cell phone, because we all have cell phones nowadays, right? And as well as a desktop. So without further ado, guys, let's talk about it. Let's hop into it. M1 Finance review. Alrighty, guys. So here we are in my M1 Finance portfolio. This is actually on the desktop. So when you log into your computer on your laptop, on your desktop, whatever it may be, this is what the portfolio is going to be looking like. And by the way, guys, you need $100 to start out an M1 Finance portfolio. And once you put in that $100, you'll be able to start investing in stocks and in ETFs. So once you log in, this is what you see, right? You see your PI here, which is actually one of the most important and unique functions of M1 Finance, which we'll get to here in a couple of minutes. You see your portfolio's value and performance here in terms of dollar value and in terms of percentage over different specified time period. So right now you can see my gain on my portfolio is 88 cents for a return of 0.72% over the span of its existence. And you guys can see I started my portfolio here on July 2nd. And you can see the yearly performance, the quarterly performance, the monthly performance, the weekly performance, and the daily performance of your portfolio. And down here, you guys can see the different slices that I have that I own that make up my personal pie, right? And again, we'll talk about the pie here in a couple of minutes. So you have my slices here, you know, 3M, Altria, AT&T, Vanguard, FTSC, Developed Markets Fund, and then Alibaba, right? So that is what the, you know, first page looks like. You can see here you have cash, $125. That shows your cash balance money that is ready to deploy either into stocks or into ETFs. And if you see see up here, you can see a couple of other tabs. You have activity, your account value, how much cash you have, your recent orders, your recent trades, your recent deposits, stuff like that. You have a holdings tab, which shows you again, what you own in terms of your portfolio stocks or ETFs. And then you have the funding tab, which it shows you your bank account. You obviously can't see mine, right? But you can see the M1 finance um, account value. Again, you can deposit, withdraw, set up upcoming transfers and stuff like that. You can also see $125 again is how much I have in cash. So going back over here to the portfolio tab, let's talk about the pie function that M1 Finance includes in its product, in its brokerage. And this is very, very awesome guys. Again, for people that don't necessarily want to be extremely involved in investing, right? So let's go to edit very quickly and you can see my my pie here, my initial pie, where I broke it down into 20% slices amongst five different positions. So let's say you start your M1 finance portfolio, you start, you know, picking out your slices, you can literally construct whatever amount of, you know, slices you want with whatever amount of percentage value you want for each one of those slices. So let's say hypothetically here, I want to add a couple of stocks, right? You can see there's a bunch of filters, market capitalization, PE ratio, dividend yield. You can do whatever you want based on your particular criteria for those stocks. But for the sake of this video, let's make it quick. Let's say we want to add Visa into this, add to the basket, right? So you click add and now you see Visa is at 0% so you're going to have to take some you know percentage value or away from some of these other stocks so visa can be added into your portfolio so let's say we want to take away 10% from 3m and we want to take 10% away from Alibaba so we can squeeze a 20% position here on visa right okay boom 
Visa's right there. So let's say we want to add another position now. Let's say we want to add Disney, right? Disney is a company we want to invest in. Let's add Disney into the pie. So you can see it's at 0% here. Let's say we want to take away some from Altria. Let's say we want to take 10% from Altria and only make Disney a 10% stake of the portfolio. You can do that. You can add it 10% and then you can click save. And once you click save, guys, it says, are you sure you want to make changes in your portfolio? Any removed slices will be sold during the next trading window. And you may be asking yourself, what does that mean? Well, the awesome thing about M1 Finance is it auto invests your money if you want it to based on the slices in your portfolio. And you guys can see I have auto invest off right now. So let's say I wanted to have M1 Finance really just invest my money based on the slices that I have automatically, I can literally just turn auto invest all my cash on and literally read this guys. If my cash balance exceeds $10, M1 will automatically invest my entire cash balance. So the whole entire idea of this is to put money in forget about it and then M1 Finance automatically invests it for you basically based on what the slices in your pie include and that is if you want it to right if you want it to auto invest sure let it auto invest but if you don't like I personally don't want it to I click don't auto invest my cash M1 will not automatically invest any of my cash which I personally like because I'm more active I like being more hands on with my portfolio in terms of building it and managing it so another awesome thing about M1 Finance is that it allows you to rebalance your portfolio whenever you want when certain slices in your pie either get overweight or underweight, right? And let me just, uh, you know, elaborate a bit on this. So you remember my personal pie, you know, is 20% split across five different slices, right? That equals 100%. That is my total pie value. And let's say you can clearly see now this is on purpose, but let's say I didn't want my 3M position to be 34%. That's very, very overweight. You know, I can hit this rebalance button and and literally, look what it says, guys. During the next trading window, M1 will buy underweight slices and sell overweight slices to bring your pie back to its target. So if I clicked confirm here, guys, that would sell off 3M and then feed it into my underweight positions, which in this case are AT&T, VEA, and BABA, right? And it'll also sell off some MO because MO, Altria Group, it's also a bit overweight, right? So it'll take some of Altria and then buy some more AT&T, VEA, and BABA. But me again, I did this purposely, right? I wanted 3M and Altria to have more weight because these, in my opinion, are more undervalued in terms of the other positions that I own. But if you wanted to, have that rebalance feature done for you automatically all you need to do is click the rebalance button and it'll literally shift your portfolio back to the original um, slices back to your original percentage slices which is awesome so over here on the research tab you can see markets you see the SPY which is an ETF that tracks the S&P DIA which tracks the Dow Jones and the QQQ ETF that tracks the NASDAQ 100 you see a bunch of news here regarding the markets different stocks the economy and so forth and another awesome thing about M1 Finance is yes you can make your own pies like we talked about earlier in this video but you can also see expert pies guys this is one of the coolest things in my opinion that you can do so let's say you want to do general investing there's pies for general investing you can plan for retirement there's target date funds that you can look at there just stocks and bonds responsible investing but one thing that I personally think is awesome is you can do and look at pies that 
are hedge fund pies. You can see Berkshire Hathaway here, which is pretty much um, Warren Buffett's portfolio. You can literally add this to the portfolio, to your personal portfolio, and invest in the same companies that Warren Buffett and Berkshire do if you personally want to, right? If you look down here, you can see the different slices. This one has 24 slices, and the target of each slice, you have 24% for Apple, 13% for Bank of America, 10% for Coca-Cola, 10% for Wells Fargo, and the list goes on, right? And if you go back to Expert Pies, you know, other hedge fund followers, you can look at Icon Capital, for example, you know, you can add that to your portfolio, you can see the different slices, you know, Icon Enterprises LP, 53%, CVR Energy, 12%, and the list goes on. You can also see how many holdings, the dividend yield for the portfolio, the expense ratio, there's just a bunch of different things to look at that I don't want to spend too much time on this video because it'll make the video way too long, but just know that M1 has a bunch of portfolios and different pies to take a look at, so maybe you can even get some ideas for your own portfolio if you want to build your own pie, right? And over here, you have my pies. This is the one that I personally uh, have here, Stasserfest portfolio, but you can also make new pies and really just experiment in that sense as well. There's a watch list here, Apple, Facebook, you know, I have some growth uh, ETFs some other ETFs here, the Vanguard Total Stock Market, Noble, which is actually a Dividend Aristocrats ETF, just watching a bunch of different things, so when the time comes, when the opportunity presents itself, I will, you know, bite and, you know, invest into those uh, different stocks and ETFs when the price is looking right. So now that we saw a bunch of the main specs about M1 Finance in terms of the desktop platform, and before we actually get into the mobile platform on my cell phone, let's Let's talk about some pros and cons very quickly about M1 Finance, some that I'm personally um, experiencing here and really just developed over the past couple of weeks of using the platforms. So one thing that I really like about M1 Finance is you're allowed to have partial shares of companies. If you notice here, my teeny tiny portfolio of $150, I actually don't own a whole share of any company, right? 3M, I own 0.29 shares Altria, I own 0.72. AT&T, I own 0.59. VEA, 0 0.47. 0 0.11 for Alibaba. And this is something very, very beneficial to those out there that are just starting out investing that don't really have more than $100, $200, $3 to invest, but still want to own some of these stocks that are higher in price. So for example, you know, these stocks, they aren't crazily expensive, but for example, some other companies that are expensive are Google and Amazon. Those shares are literally thousands of dollars. Amazon is $2,000 per share at the time that I'm recording this video. So buying fractional shares of Amazon with M1 Finance is super important for everybody out there that wants to invest in Amazon but doesn't have a lot of money to invest. So partial shares, I love that. And also it's a discount broker. I love that as well. You don't have to pay money each time you buy buy and you don't have to pay money each time you sell, which is also very awesome for those out there that are starting out with a smaller account balance because let's say you have a uh, an account with Fidelity or TD Ameritrade where you're being charged five, six, seven dollars for a trade. This adds up, it eats into your profits and if you're starting out with a hundred, two hundred dollars, you know, that five, ten dollars you're spending on commissions, you know, that is going to be eating into your profits and you need to make a certain percentage percentage back on your investment simply to cover the commissions. So those are two key benefits, in my opinion, to M1 Finance. So one of the main cons that I've realized about M1 Finance is when you actually buy a stock, you don't get it at the exact price that it is listed right then and there on the exchanges. You have to actually wait until the next trading window to buy a stock. So let's say, for example, you know, I wanted to buy more AT AT&T right now, I'd click on AT&T, I'd click buy, let's say I wanted to buy, for example, let's say another $15 of AT&T, and let's just buy $15 now for the sake of the video, you click buy rather than sell, obviously, 
correctly, and you can see it's minus 15 on your buy orders. That'll take your cash down, my cash down to $110. I click continue, and now it says during the next trading window. So that is not necessarily the price of AT&T right now. It's going to be what the price of AT&T is tomorrow, right? So that is one thing that I personally, you know, don't like too much about M1 Finance. But again, this is built for people that are longer term investors. This is not for trading stocks due to this reason, right? You couldn't trade stocks if you don't get the stock at the exact price, right? Because that would just cause a lot, a lot of mayhem in your account, right? So this is mainly for long term investors. And if you have a long term outlook, you know, the couple of cents that you're missing here from not buying it at the exact price it is now and buying it in the next trading window, it's not going to make too crazy of a difference, but it's still, in my opinion, one of those things that is a bit uh, of a con here. Another con is that if you do want to use the rebalance f uh, function here on M1 Finance, it's going to cause a, a taxable event each time you do that. And I am not a CPA by any means. This is not accounting advice whatsoever. This is just what I've researched, what I've experienced, and what I've learned briefly using the M1 Finance portfolio. If you click rebalance and and it sells 3M, and let's say you haven't been holding 3M for more than a year, that is going to cause a short-term capital gains tax where you're going to be taxed at your tax bracket and not at the long-term rate of 15%. But let's say you hold the position for more than a year and then you rebalance it, then it'll be a long-term capital gains of 15%. But for those of you all that are new, you're rebalancing every single week, every two, three weeks, just understand you are causing a short-term capital tax um, gain there, and you're going to have to pay ultimately more in taxes than you would have if you held the position and you didn't rebalance for at least one year. Alrighty guys, so now that we talked about the desktop application, we talked about some pros and we talked about some cons about M1 Finance and we saw some specs about it, let's take a look at the mobile application here. So once you log in, once you put in your credentials, this is what the main page is going to look like. At the top, you're going to have your pie, you're going to have your portfolio, and it's going to break it down into the slices that make up your pie, right? And you can click between all of the different slices so you can see the value of those slices, the weight they hold in your portfolio, and how much they've gone up and how much they, they've gone down since you've purchased into those particular slices, those different stocks and ETFs. And if you go up here to the top left, you go to activity, you can see your pending orders, you can see buy orders, sell orders, deposits, how much cash you have and how much your portfolio is worth. And if if you go down here to holdings, it shows you all of your different holdings, stocks, ETFs, the total amount of holdings, the total value of your portfolio, and how much the portfolio has appreciated or depreciated since its inception. And if you go down here to funding, you can see your bank account. Obviously, you can't see my bank account, but you can see yours there. Once you do log in, withdraw, deposit your activity, funding history, account transfers, account scheduled transfers stuff like that, right? And if you go back up here to portfolio, you go to research, this is where you can see all of your different pies, even pies that you haven't used yet in any portfolios. And if you go up here to, um, you know, news, you can actually search different stocks, different funds, expert pies. You have the S&P 500 here, the Dow, the QQQ, which tracks the NASDAQ, and a bunch of other different news. And if we go back here, you can see, you know, individual stocks, right? If you want to search individual stocks, you have funds, a bunch of different ETFs you can take a look through and do research on. And of course, the expert pies that you can take a look at for yourself. You have the hedge fund ones that we talked about before. You have, you know, responsible investing. You have have 
you know, planning for retirement based on what date you plan on retiring and based on whether you're aggressive, conservative, moderate. There's a bunch of different investment styles that are created into pies for you, you know, based on however you want to invest. So there's a bunch of cool things that you can really look at here. And again, you can see your pies and your watch list. So when it comes down to the mobile application, that is what it looks like. It's very crisp. It's very easy to use and very, very easy to understand. All right, guys, so that's it for the M1 Finance Review. I really hope you did find value in this video. And if you want to actually sign up for M1 Finance, you could get $20 by simply signing up and funding the account with $100 in the month of July. So the link is down below in the description box. It's also pinned down below in the comment section. It is a referral link. You will be helping me directly if you do use it. I really do appreciate if you do so. I'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks again for watching. Drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe for future content. Peace out.